Hey, what's up? Colby from Sanitarium Productions. Today we're taking a look at the 1985 Cobra Hydrofoil Moray. We're going to go in. We've already stripped this thing pretty much apart. And we're just going to build it back up from scratch here. And I'm just going to take you through all those steps and show you all the little pieces that come along with this thing. Similar to some of our past videos. So I've already kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I went ahead and cleaned all the parts. Um, I figured y'all didn't want to see me do this for another three hours in the cleaning process, so I went ahead and took care of that. A couple of things to note up front. Off the body itself, I was not able to actually get the engine itself out, so it's still in place. And so we're going to skip that step when we come to it. And there is also one of the gun turrets that's still attached to the main hull here that um did not come off easy enough so we just kind of left it in place other than that we also have the uh, main body hull here we've actually got um, one two tabs that are broken off of this thing that's pretty typical of vehicles of this age and there's not really much I can do about that except try to find another hull at some point this will work fine for our purposes today, so just keep in mind that there are two tabs that are broken off of this thing, so it's not going to be 100% complete, but yeah, 90, 92 to 97%, so it's pretty close. If you'll stick around, we'll uh, readjust the camera and start looking at all the parts and pieces and see what we can do from there. What we have here is the 1985 Cobra Moray Hydrofoil. The main deck plate. The bottom hole, all the parts and pieces. What we're going to start with is just the first step. They do say that adult supervision may be required. There are a lot of parts and pieces to this thing. This is probably one of the bigger sets that they actually have as far as the number of pieces that come with this stupid thing. So it's kind of hard to get all these things in mint shape and everything like that, but we managed to track down all the parts and we'll just go from there. Step one, place control bar on table with handle to your right. Snap ends of four struts over four posts on control bar. Position four struts to the left as shown. Just move some of this stuff out of the way so we can kind of see what we're doing. All right, so this piece right here is the um, the control bar. This is what activates the hydrofoil mechanism itself. So to this we have four of these little pieces right here. We'll try to keep it on screen so y'all can see. Four of these, two in the front, and these two in the rear. And essentially these things just snap into place. On this thing right here, there are four little tabs, one on each side, and they just line up with the holes here, and you just snap them in place. It's really flexible plastic, so it shouldn't take too much to do. They just snap into place like that. We'll go ahead and put in all four of these on. This is the handle that they're referring to. There's a little groove right here. When you have it on the vehicle itself, you basically put your thumb like this and push it and pull it to get it to activate. So this is what it's calling the handle. And it wants it on the right, so we're just going to flip it over like this. Step two, locate rear hydrofoil with full to your left and notch facing up, snap holes in rear right, struts over small post and side, hydrofoil as shown. 
Repeat with left hydrofoil and left struts. So we have these two pieces here. One is for the front and one is for the back. The front one, if you look at the bottom of it, will be the one that is the flat one, if that makes sense. The one that has the ridges on it is the rear one. And the rear one goes to the back where the uh, handle is. So we're going to start with this one. And we're just going to put it together. So basically just says turn it so that the angles are facing towards the front of the ship. And then you'll see here there are two more notches just like we had in the front. And they're just going to attach to these pieces here. They line up with the holes here. And this is pretty flimsy plastic, so you can kind of bend it around as you need to. Just don't bend it too far because it will snap in half if you're not careful. Essentially, you're going to do the same thing. Just take the hole and put it over top of the notchy thing, the peg, and just snap it into place like that. Do that for the other one as well. And you may not be able to see that too well. And it just snaps in, and it just snaps in place like that. So it's going to end up sitting basically like this right here. And we're going to do the same thing for the front. Again for the front one. It's the one that's smooth. The little ridges are not in the center. They're more out here on the side. You want to take the angled part facing the front of the ship. So that's what we're doing here. And it works the same way. There's two pegs here. And they just match up to the holes in the struts. Now what do you call those things? The struts. So... Just going to take this and put it in place. I think, yeah, there it goes. Just snaps into place just like that. Step 3. Turn hole upside down. Hold handle of control bar. Lift front hydrofoil and slide control bar into hole as shown. Make sure control bar slides under tabs. Fold both hydrofoils toward rear of hull. Rest large post in notches. So we have the hole here, and we're going to flip it upside down. And if you look in here, there's actually, let's see if I can get the right. There are a couple of little notches. There they are. Those are what we're going to try to slide this thing under. And there are three sets of those. One here, one here and one here. So, take the hydrofoil and just feed it in here until you hit those little notches and make sure they go underneath. It should slide pretty easily in there. You may have to pop these things up to get them to go in here. Just kind of feed it through there and should slide relatively easily through there until it gets to that last one and then go all the way to the front with it or as far forward as they will go and there's actually a catch right here on the back that's as far forward as it'll go. 
So it's good to know that we're in the right spot there. So, And it just wants us to fold these things like this and like this. Step 4. With open end of long mount facing rear of hull, insert four studs over post on front hydrofoil. Snap studs firmly into four holes in hull. Repeat with short mount and rear hydrofoil. Slide handle back and forth to test hydrofoils. Note, put hydrofoils up before continuing. So we have these two things here are the long mounts that they're talking about. We've got two different sizes here, so when you're looking for parts, make sure that you get two different ones because they won't fit otherwise. They're not a lot different, but they are different enough so that you should know the difference between the two of them. The big long one is the one that goes in the front, and the short one is will go in the back. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front one first. All right, we're looking at the front hydrofoil. And we're just going to take this mount and we're going to turn it so that the open end faces the rear and we just set it over top of so if you look at it there is an indentation here notches so these pieces fit onto there so just flip it upside down stick it in place like this and if you look in the bottom there, you'll see four holes, and these four pieces should slide right into that. So just set it down like that, push it all the way down until it snaps into place. And we'll just flip it upside down real quick, and those are the four that we just put in place. So that is the front. The rear is going to be the same way except for the smaller piece. So now we're looking at the rear. And again, if you look in here, they'll see four holes in the bottom that will line up with the four pegs. And again, there are these two knobs posts here that fit into these indentations. And in this particular one, you're going to orient it the same way, so you want the open end facing the rear of the vehicle, just like this. And we just fit that over top of that, and just push down until we get it to line up with the holes at the bottom, and just snap it in place. We're going to flip it over and make sure that it, they're in there. And they are, so we're good to go. And they are, so we're good to go. Now that we've done that, we're just going to test it to see if it works. So you're going to grab the little post on the back. That is the control bar that we put in earlier. You just want to pull it. And these should fit down into the little indentations and just press it forward and they raise up and that's the action that we're looking for turn it sideways here so this is pull back push forward pull back push forward so as long as you got that it means it's working correctly and you're good to go and it wants to make sure that you put the hydrofoils up before you move on to the next step, so we're just going to leave them like this right here. Step 5. Peel and apply labels 19 through 23 to interior as shown. Turn hull right side up. Insert steering wheel post into hole and dashboard of interior. Fit seats over crossbars on interior. Place two slots in interior over two ribs in hull as shown. This is the interior, the cockpit, if you will. It wants us to go ahead and apply the labels to this thing now before we put it into place. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait and put the decals on later. Just be advised that if you do skip this step right now, it may be a little difficult to put the labels on later. 
because essentially there's going to be a little one right here in the back. There'll be one right, will go right here in the center console. And then control panels up here, and then one here, and one here. It may get a little difficult to get those in place after we put this place, after we put this into place. Once we actually put the hole on top of it, but we're going to say why not and just do it later. So we're going to move on. So this is the cockpit up close. We've got two of these chairs like this that fit in here. And if you'll notice, there are two pegs in the center here. That is where the seats fit in place. There's just these round peg holes here. It just fits straight in on these. So just going to turn those up and just set them in there and they just snap in place. And if you'll notice they do kind of rotate so if you wanted to move them later on that's fine. There are two of these so we'll put the other one in place just like that. There is also a steering wheel and it's this little thing right here looks pretty similar to other steering wheels from the line. There's a little peggy thing right here that will hold it in place and there's a hole, a peg hole here in the center of this dash on the driver's side. That's where we're going to put this. It just snaps into place like so and there you have it. That is the cockpit. Now that we have the cockpit put together we just stood this upside down and we're resting it up on the hydrofoils. We just want to insert the cockpit into this. So on the cockpit itself, if you'll notice, see where we can get a good shot. There are two small little notches at the very front near the where the driver's feet would be. One on each side, here and here. Those notches should match up to these little side post things I guess they're calling it the ribs so basically you want to put these notches over top of the ribs and this is where this will sit it should fit it's going to be a little loose right now but essentially that's all it is it just fits in place right there as you see, it won't go backwards anymore, and it won't go forwards anymore. So that's where we want it, right there. Step 6. Insert tab on rear of hull into hull in rear of deck. Starting at the rear, snap tabs on sides of hull into holes and sides of deck. Squeeze nose of hull to snap tabs into nose of deck. Note: Make sure all short mount studs are snapped into deck before continuing. So we're going to take our nice red deck hole and it just fits over top of the bottom piece. Essentially you want to match up the peg holes with the pegs or the tabs as they're calling them here. So there's one here that matches here. There's one in the sides here. This matches to this. And then you've got one over here on this side that matches to this one. And then one on this corner that matches here. And this corner to here. And there's two here at the very front going to these two here. And it wants you to work from the back forward. As we stated earlier, we're missing a couple of tabs off of this thing here. So, yeah, we're still going to be okay. So, take this. Start in the rear, just press it down on top so it hits the top of the uh, base and it should just kind of fold down into place like so. Just kind of wiggle it around a little bit to get it to line up correctly. Then you're going to have this peg hole here, this on this on this side. This one here, that one up, and the front ones. And just push down to snap everything into place. You may have to squeeze 
the bottom hole just a little bit to get it to line up okay the little tab should line up and uh, just push down on it a little bit this one right here is being a little troublesome but uh, we'll just push in on it like that and it should snap down and lock into place and just check all of them while you're there and make sure they've all locked in place And again, I'm missing this one back here and this one in the front, so. But it's still solidly locked into place, so we're good to go. Step 7. Insert T-tabs on front of missile box bottom into notches in front of missile box top. Slide T-tabs toward rear of missile box. Snap rear of missile box together. So this here is the missile box itself. One of the things to look out for when you're looking for parts and loose items, this actuator joint, this long rod right here, is one of the most common things that break on these things. And essentially what it is, this acts as the actuator to raise and lower the missile system. So if this, if this piece is broke, it will not raise and lower. So... Be looking for that when you're out scouting for parts and everything. So we're going to flip this thing upside down. As you can see, there are a couple of these notch holes. And they just fit in place over these notches right here. See if I can turn that right here. Those match up with these here in the back. Similarly, there are these little T-joints in the front which will match up to these T-joints on the rack. So when you're looking for loose specimens of this thing, make sure that these T-tabs are intact or you won't get a good seal. So basically we're gonna flip this over, stick these T-joints together like this, and then just kind of shimmy it back into place until these notches line up enough to snap into place and then just put a little bit of pressure on them and snap and snap and there you have your missile box together step eight insert actuator button into hole in deck as shown insert missile box lever into hole and actuator button rest posts on missile box onto notches in hull Rest front of box on ledge of deck. So this little piece right here is the actual actuator button. As you can see at the bottom there is a little open notch for that. So the way this works. Let's set this down over here. This notch lines up with this little piece on the post of the missile box. <clears throat> Essentially, it just slides over the top of it like this, and then when you press down on it, it leverages it up like that. This piece will fit in this hole in the front. And it should note that there is a grooved notch on one side. See if we can uh, zoom in on that. So this is the actuator. On one side, there is a bit of a notched long groove thing on it. Hopefully you can see that. That is going to line up to the little notch on this hole here. Let's see if we can focus in on that for you. There we go. So right here is the hole with a notch on it for it. And as you can see there's a notch right here and the notch on the for the peg. So should just slide straight in like there like that. If it doesn't fit Oops. If it doesn't fit, you've got to turn the wrong way and it won't go into place. So just uh, rotate it until it 
fits into place and it should just drop in like that. Now that that's there, what you want to do is take your missile box and this long arm and it's going to fit into that hole that we pointed out earlier and it just kind of rests in there and then there are two little notches one on each side right here right there if you can see that and on the sides of these things there are these pegs here so what we're going to do is just line those pegs up with the holes one on each side and you may have to wiggle it a little bit to get it in place here but there should be enough room to do that and there's enough give in these things and I can't see where I'm at right now so I'm just guessing you may even have to bring it forward or bring it back just make sure that you keep this working and don't break it off and let's see here well there we go just push on a little bit and get it to go into place and it should just fall right in place like that and if everything works correctly you press this button down and the uh, top should raise like that right there likewise when you push it down it should go down pretty easily if that's working correctly then that means you've done it the right way if it's not then take it out and do it again just be careful when you're working with this thing right here this is kind of fragile and it may break off if you're not careful and there you go step nine position front of blast shield under top tabs on back of missile box and place one post on notch under deck place other post on blast shield Place other post of blast shield over deck opening and snap down into place. Press actuator button to lift missile box. Insert four missiles into missile box. So this long piece here, long and flat, and it's got a little boxy thing on it. This is the blast shield. And essentially it just fits in right here. As you can see here, it is not a square, so it will only fit in one way. So you just make, for, make sure that you match up the angles on the deck itself. There are two notches on each side. And on the ship itself, like before, we actually have little holes here for it, post holes. I'll soon, we'll see if we can zoom in on this for you. But essentially, you'll take this, stick it into these notches, and that's how it goes so um if you'll also notice on the front here you have these two uh, longer pieces of detail work or whatever they are so this thing will actually need to fit down underneath them and then there's another piece on the side here that it fits over top of so essentially you have to kind of put it in like this and then push the post down so we'll zoom in on that so you can exact so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're zoomed in a little bit now and taking a look at the blast shield itself. So as I was pointing out, this thing is angled so it will only fit in one way. And there are these two tabs or long pieces of detail work on the actual missile box itself. So this blast shield needs to fit underneath this, but over top of this undercarriage piece. And on the sides, there are these two pegs, one on each side. And the actual hull itself, there are two holes on each side. So you kind of have to do some trickery here. And essentially, you turn it at an angle, and go in from the back. Then you kind of try to put this one peg hole in over here to start with and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not but essentially you just push it into place like that and you pop one end in just like that and this other one should be raised a little bit 
and now we just kind of muscle it into place just kind of press in on it and down to get it to pop in um, sometimes it works easy sometimes it doesn't you may also try to kind of pull it out a little bit on the hole maybe just to try to get it to fit a little easier you can kind of stick your finger underneath the corner here and kind of push up on it and then if you're lucky it'll just pop into place like that right there then what you want to do when you get that in place you press the actuator just to test it if the missile box raises and the, so the front of the missile box will come up the rear of the blast housing should also come up it won't come up a whole lot but it will move a little bit and pivot a little bit so and if it gets stuck that's okay that's actually how it works you will want to that'll lock it into place so that it simulates that the missile is firing pull up on it and it'll go back into place so there's the missile box assembly we'll go ahead and get the missiles go ahead and lock this into place and place the missiles in now we're just going to load the missiles in so you should have four of these little missiles that will fit into the missile launcher itself something to note about the missiles themselves what I've kind of noticed is that there are a couple of variations in the actual coloring of them so if you're looking for parts and pieces and things like that just try to find four of them that match color as much as possible some of these are a darker yellow some of them are a lighter yellow so you just try to match them all up so they're pretty well consistent colors across the board if you'll notice when we turn them upside down they have little I don't know what you call these things but uh, little openings I guess they were trying to shape to save plastic and they just didn't fill them in so you want that to be facing the bottom of the hydrofoil so what you want to do is load them with the solid side up and if you look in here if we can turn it right you can kind of see that so it's basically just four slots in here and we just drop these into place just like that and they just sit in there at kind of an angle so they don't really stay exactly straight but and just kind of put them in place like that right there and there are four of the missiles and four holes so just drop them into place and you're good to go four missiles just like that And they don't fire or anything like that, but they look kind of cool when they're in there. And you can kind of see them. So when the missile launcher raises up, it's pretty cool. Step 10. Snap knobs on hatch covers into holes near hatch openings. Snap lens into searchlight. Insert post on searchlight into searchlight hole. These are the hatches themselves. There are two of these. And as you can see, there are completely opposite of one another. So they only go on one side. But they are shaped the same shape as the hull here. So you just want to match up the shape on each side. So essentially, there is an opening for them to look out of on the front. And that faces the front of the ship. So you just want to take that. There are little notches, little posts, thingies at the very side here. And they just snap into place on these right here. So you just kind of put them in place. And just kind of push them in until they snap into place. And you may just want to make sure that you can move them up and down to 
so that they fall into place and fit into the hole the right way. This one is not exactly doing that. Yeah, there we go. And just kind of push it around a little bit. And it just latches into place. And it just lifts open like that. And closes like that. Do that one on that one. Same thing for the other side. Match up the shape with the opening. And just kind of push it into place here. There we go. Oop. These things can be a little aggravating sometimes. They are kind of flimsy plastic, so you should hear it snap into place when it does. And just like that. Up and down. For the searchlight, this is the searchlight. And one of the things that I should note is that there's supposed to be a little bitty glass lens that fits into place right here. That little glass lens is probably the single most hard to come by part on this entire thing. Consequently, I don't have one of them, so we're going to skip that step. If you can find one, stick it in a fireproof vault somewhere and put it up somewhere because you got you something there. But, so, there is this little round peggy thing here, the little grooves on each side, and essentially just put this into this hole right here on the back side, and it just pops into place. Just kind of twist a little bit to get it to go in, and it should uh, just fit in right there, and turn and rotate wherever you want it to go. The door is not wanting to stay down. So if you get something that's uh, doing something like that, just kind of scoot it around until it fits into place and it should be fine. This old plastic sometimes doesn't want to cooperate as well as you'd like. There we go. Whoop. Right. Quit that. Oh well. If you have something like that, you may just want to try to find a different one that fits a little bit better. I don't have one on hand right now, so we're going to just have to live with that for right now, so it's fine. So that is the searchlight and the hatch covers. Step 11. Press tab on left windshield into notch on left side of cabin as shown. Slide windshield between ridge and press into place. Repeat with right windshield. Insert post on windshield gun into hole between windshields. So we have these glass pieces here. There's one for each side. And it'll fit one here and one here. They are both... They look the same, but uh, they're actually separate pieces, so you'll know. They only go on one side or the other, not both. So if it doesn't fit in one side, then you've got it in the wrong one. Flip it over and put it in the other side. If you'll notice, there is this little tab peg right here. And it will actually line up with this peg hole in the bottom corner. There and there. There is also the bigger peg in this side that fits under this little notch that you can hopefully see right there. So it fits underneath this right here. So essentially, you stick this peg in here and put this one down. Let's see if we can do this. So stick that in that place and kind of wiggle it around till it latches in just like that. There's one on this side and one on the other side. In the back corner here, there is a little notch for it to uh, slide into place to keep it from going from side to side. So just make sure that you get the back side into that little notch right there as well. You may also have to turn your searchlight around far enough 
so that you can get this to go into place. But it works the same way. You just kind of stick the front notchy thing into the hole and then you move it around enough until it falls into place there. You just kind of push it down until it falls into place and you should be good to go. The other part that we have is this cannon. It's a windshield gun is what they're calling it. And on the bottom of it, there is a peg. And it just fits into the peg hole in the center right here. Just kind of slide it back and uh, push down and it should just slide into place. Just like that. And it does rotate a little bit, so the guy in there needs to turn it one way or the other he can most of the time everybody just leaves it pointing out but uh, pretty much just put it in place and press down on it and that is it for the windshield gun and the windshields step 12 snap knobs on turret gun into notches in turret place turret into turret hole in cabin snap into place Insert post on two side missiles into holes on sides of cabin. So what we have here is the actual turret itself and the turret cannon. So there are two little pegs, one on each side of this. And what it does is it just fits into these peg holes that are just slight indentations on the turret itself, if you can see that. But essentially just turn it so that it's facing the front and if you'll notice there is this little notch thing here and inside of this there are small notches which is what helps raise and lower this thing and it's basically just a catch that just holds it in place but essentially you just uh, stick it on here and just push in and out at the same time and it should just snap into place like that and then you can raise it and lower it and it just kinda has a nice little spring to it so it's not too bad then the missiles that we have are these right here and they are different from the ones that go into the front of the ship they look kinda similar but they are different they have these nice angular fins on them and you'll notice that there is a, a peg here in the center and this peg will fit into a peg hole in the side of the boat itself which is what secures it into place but uh, like the ones in the front they're kind of hollow inside they have a lot of empty space in them I guess they were trying to save plastic cut cost so that's the assembly for the turret and the look at the missiles themselves we'll zoom out and look at the ship and put these into place alright now that we have assemble the turret itself it's time to put it in place and so if you look at the turret itself around the sides of it there are these little notch tab thingies I don't know how else to describe them but uh, there's about four of those actually five of those and what it'll do is that when you put it in place here they just latch onto the underside here and just keep it in place and essentially that's all you do is you just take it and you just press it down and it snaps into place and it just rotates left and right like that. For the missiles, the pegs that we talked about earlier, they fit into these little holes on the side here and there's one on each side. So you'll just take one of these things and just kind of push it down into that hole just press down until it kind of locks into place like that and same thing for the other side and there you are step 13 insert knobs on left exhaust pipe into holes in left side of engine as shown snap bottom of exhaust pipe under engine half Repeat with right exhaust pipe. Fit holes in tailpipe over post on exhaust pipes. So as we stated earlier, uh, the actual engine itself is pretty solidly stuck in here. 
and it's meant to kind of stay in place after you put it there as you can see it's kind of loose still but the way the tabs actually hold it in place it's just very hard to get it out so we're going to skip that step but we still have the tail pipes here to take a look at and we can put them together with it in place on the tail pipe itself we have so we've got two pieces that are basically the same except they are mirrors of each other so there is a right and a left here and you'll notice there are the two peg holes the two pegs on each one of these so when you're looking for them you'll need to make sure that uh, one's an H and one's a backwards H I guess is the best way of looking at it or lowercase n and a backwards lowercase n whichever so the two pegs on these will fit into the top there are peg holes on the engine block itself and what you will do is uh, so on the exhaust pipe itself you'll notice on the H part itself there is one end that is like a skinnier pipe on it that's what we want facing the rear of the ship then you just match up the pegs with the peg holes uh, but since this one's in place we're going to try to just uh, slip this in underneath here and I don't know how well this is going to work but uh, there is a opening here under this if we can figure out how to slide it under here so you may just have to tilt it and then just kind of tilt it and push it and rotate it and kind of wiggle it around a little bit until it uh, kind of get these peg holes to line up and then they should just uh, pop into place and it should line up pretty easily but you may have to bear down on it a little bit to get it to get it to line up exactly right uh, just keep trying until just keep playing with it until you get it to go into place you may have to just press in on the tab itself to go in and it just locks in place once you get that right do the same thing for the other side the little pointy thing goes to the outside just kind of tilt it as much as you can to get it to go underneath that part of the engine and just kind of slide it and rotate it until it kind of lines up a little bit and we just press down to get the pegs to turn down I'm just going to turn this around so we can see a little bit better Like I say, if it just kind of keep working at it until it fits the right way. And that one snapped in. Well, it's been a little bit of a pain. You may find that you have to put one in first before you can get the other one to start. But luckily these little pegs are uh, pretty well soft plastic so they'll bend. You don't have to worry too much about them breaking off. 
but be a little careful. If you push them too much, they will break. Well. And if all else fails, find a little screwdriver. And you should see that it actually just goes right into place. Strange enough. Yep, yeah, and there we go. The next part is the exhaust tips. As you can see, they're just round. You've got a small side and a large size. Small side and a large side. So the small side is what will fit onto the exhaust pipes here. And it should just line up and just push on it. And it should just snap in place. And there you go. You've got your exhaust on. Step 14. Place front engine tab into slot and engine compartment and push rear tab in place. Insert depth charge cap into depth charge. Repeat with other depth charges. Slide depth charge tray into tray compartments. Lift trays to insert depth charges. So as we said, we've already got the engine block in place, so we're going to skip that step. Then in the back, these are the depth charge trays. And you'll have two of these depth charge trays, and they are identical as far as I can tell. Basically, they just uh, fit just like that. And the actual depth charges themselves just fit in the place just like this, and then they go down so that basically, when you pull up, when you pull up then the just tap them and they roll out of the back of the boat into the water like that we'll zoom in and uh take a look at the actual depth charges themselves these are the actual depth charges themselves you should have four of these to make a complete hydrofoil what's interesting about these is that they are a two-part piece in the very end of them, there is a quite a bit of little detail on the actual end cap. And it's actually a removable piece. It doesn't remove easily, but these end caps do pop off. And we're just going to use a screwdriver and uh, pop this off. If we can. They're on there pretty tight. And there it comes. So, this is what the two pieces look like by themselves. We've got the round part, and it's hollow in there. You can kind of see into the end of it there. And we've got the actual charge itself, which is just a uh, little, little cross-looking thing right there with some circular rivets on it so when you're looking for parts of these just make sure you find a complete one which is the hollow part and the actual charge itself and they just slide in there like that and just put them in place and snap down on them like that and the way they actually fit in this thing is they just lay in here and then kind of looks like this when they're in place and these pop up and these just uh, slide out when the Cobra guys are in the back of the boat and just pop them out like that right there so those are the depth charges so we want four of these uh, 
there'll be two per tray and then the tray just fits into the back just like that then you pull up on them and push forward a little bit and it drops out that's kind of cool so there put that one back in and we've got two more for the other side step 15 place storage covers over storage areas fit engine cover over engine insert posts on four m30s into four holes in rear deck the engine block is already in place so we have the engine cover for it And as you'll notice, there is an open end and a closed end. The open end will fit over top of the exhaust pipes that we put on earlier. So we're just going to take it and sit it on top there, and it should just snap into place. And just like that. So, And you can see the exhaust covers on the back. The storage covers are these little things right here they've got three foot pegs for the feet of the cobras to fit in and on the bottom of it there is this little notchy thing here the notchy thing will actually fit in the very bottom of the boat there are a couple of little guides on each side you basically just fit these in and they just snap in place and I can't see this so I don't know if you can either I don't know the best way to show you this to you Eh, but it's just like that. They just snap into place and they secure down and, and it gives you, you can store weapons inside these things or whatever you want to. Then you can use the actual pegs for the figures themselves to stand on in the back of the boat. And it's okay. The other thing. There are four of these, they call them M30s, little machine guns, and they all are similar, so there's no difference in any of them. So there's a peg in the bottom of them right there, and they just fit into these four peg holes around the side. So I'll just put these into place like this. As you can see, they can rotate pretty much almost all the way around, though I don't know why you'd want to do that because as soon as you put another gun right here you're going to be shooting your buddies <laughs> but whatever so there are four of these and they just snap into place like so these are one of the things that are often missing um, the machine guns so make sure that you're looking for them when you're trying to put one of these together and they just fit on there and rotate around so Step 16. Insert posts on torpedo half into holes in other torpedo half. Insert tab on torpedo into torpedo slot. Slide forward to lock into place. Repeat with other torpedo. Snap two tabs on left side cannon into two holes on left side of body. Insert post on cannon barrel into hole. Repeat with right cannon. So these uh, torpedoes are already together so they're just two halves and you just snap them in place so I guess you won't be able to see that but once you have them put into place there are these tabs that lock into place here and if you'll notice if 
I don't know if there's a good way to show this or not. I guess that's about the best we can do here. There are like a little H here on it. So there are indentations on them. And if you'll notice on this, there are indentations on it also. So you just match that up. And uh, so it goes on. You basically want the uh, big end is the end that is the firing end. So basically these are just the turbines that run. So turn it facing the front of the boat like this. You just kind of put it underneath here and just slide it up into place here and just slide it forward to get it to lock. Just like that. And it just sits there like that. And there are two of these. So you do the same thing for the other side of the ship. You turn it the right way, obviously. Put it up under the ship. Little notches match up. And then you just slide it forward to lock it in place. You may need to pull it down a little bit to, so that it sits right. And there it is. And now you have your uh, torpedoes armed. The other thing that it's wanting us to do is to put on the cannons. As you can see, and as we stated earlier, this one was already in place, so we're going to skip that one. But we have the other one for the other side of the ship that we are going to put on. And looking at it, we've got these two tabs on the back side. And then you've got this round piece here. The round piece is the most easily broken part on the gun itself so you're going to find a lot of them that have the tabs in place here but don't have this in here in place and it's not really that big a deal it's just there for stabilization it doesn't really hurt for anything but be careful when you're looking for them so you make sure that it does have the round tabs on the stabilizers for the gun up towards the barrel so the two tabs are going to fit into place right here on these two openings and it's going to lock into place and then this will fit into this hole right here. So you just snap it into place there and this thing will just fall into place there also. And your cannon is mounted and ready to go. Step 17. Place Moray pilot in pilot seat and another Cobra figure in passenger seat. Carries up to 11 figures, includes Cobra pilot, Lampreys, other figures sold separately. And here we have the actual Cobra Lampreys figure. So we're going to do like it says and just uh, stick him here in the pilot seat. He just fits in there like this. I don't have another figure, but... I do have another Lampreys figure, so we're going to stick him in the other seat, and he's going to co-pilot for right now, just so that we make sure we follow all the instructions. And they just sit in there. So now there's two figures in there. And that is pretty much it. That is the completion of the Moray Hydrofoil. Step 18, peel and apply labels as shown. And there we have the uh, completely restored 1985 Cobra Hydrofoil Moray. The only thing left to do is to add the decals to it. I've got a nice set of repro decals that I'll probably do another video for you on. Other than it missing the uh, searchlight lens cover and it's got two broken tabs, it's 100% complete now. So technically it's, you know, 98% complete, but it's in good shape. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of the other ones down in the uh, channel. Send me any suggestions you have. Tell me, what you, tell me what you want to see in future episodes. And happy hunting.
Yo, Joe.